Hello, this is Greg Gallus from Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm, coming to you today from where I brew worm tea. Uh, you'll have to pardon my neighbors, they're all mowing the yard, they're always mowing the yard, shooting guns, riding motorcycles, or doing something. But in any event, we're going to talk about worm tea today. Why? Because worm tea is really crucial to reinvigorating and bringing your soul back to life. Any good book on organic gardening should start out with the first paragraph, first sentence saying good soil is living soil. What is worm tea? It's an all natural liquid pest repellent and fertilizer, but mainly a probiotic. Worm tea is brewed specifically to increase the good beneficial bacteria in your soil. And I want to show you where I'm brewing some right here. I brew and I just sold a bunch of farmers market so I got to replenish this. You see all the air blowing up through here? These are uh, these are pickle barrel, actually olive barrels. They're 58 gallons. I got two of them here. And look at the air hoses I got running in here. And very substantial um, stones in there. And they have a pump. My air pumps for these are pretty substantial. I got two pumps, one for each barrel. And they're pretty substantial. Now I'm going to show you how you can do this with a small aquarium type system. But first let's return to the science of worm tea. The key thing to worm tea is the bacteria and high fungi hyphae, if I get the pronunciation right in it. Uh, fungal networks in a forest floor are dendritic. They have a network just like the brain cells you have in your head. Galaxies are also uh, distributed through the universe in a dendritic type network. Interesting. Unless you wonder if the universe is one big mind. I like a story for Galactic Gregs. Check out my other channel on that, by the way. So, what these uh, networks in the soil do is they actually provide a network of communication and movement of nutrients back and forth across the forest floor. It really balances things out. It's amazing. And beneficial bacteria break down nutrients that's already in the soil to make them more readily available to the plant roots. What uh, barm tea does is restore that. I mean, look at these beautiful trees behind me. There's no big bird flying over these trees spraying stuff to make them grow. It's all there in the soil. It's alive. We've killed our soil in modern agriculture with uh, fertilizers, believe it or not, like fertilizers and everyone knows pesticides and herbicides and of course the tilling, the activity and even like my neighbors in the morning yard, that don't help. <laughs> so uh, the truth of the matter is we need to restore that to our gardens to make our plants optimize and grow well. If you spray worm tea on the leaf of your plants, the, the nutrients that's in the stuff, I want you to look how dark this stuff is. The nutrients that are in here uh, will be soaked up by the uh, leaves and taken in directly. Also it fights mold, mildew, uh, and rust. It kills a lot, the bacteria in here will kill a lot of your uh, soft-bodied bugs, worms, and deter insects from biting your plants. If you pour this stuff into your soil, it will help uh, break down nutrients that's already in the soil, as I mentioned before, and uh, make your plants grow like crazy. Because there are fungal hyphae particles in here that will form the mycelium networks, the mycelium dendritic networks, which is like the brains of your garden soil, to help transport nutrients. The bacteria will help break the nutrients down. The plants put sugars out through the roots to feed that network to feed the good beneficial bacteria and to feed the uh, fungi. Unfortunately, in our gardens and our fields, the plants are feeding nothing, they're wasting those sugars, and we pour a lot of nitrate and other stuff in there. And what happens is we pour too much nitrate and it makes the plant sick, and they get ate up by bugs, and then we give them other things, and it's just a cascading uh, event of what we do in our gardens with chemicals in our fields. But uh, the network will balance itself out properly if you have a good balance of proper bacteria and fungi. And that's what worm tea establishes. A thimble full of worm tea is said to have 100,000 different species. Not a population, I'm talking species count. That's why it has such a broad spectrum effect. Why well, can do so many things? You know, fight mold, mildew, rust, kill and deter bugs and uh, break down nutrients that's already in the soil. So what we're doing with worm tea is we're bringing the soil back to life. And one of the keys to that 
is I have to feed it to keep the good bacteria alive. And so I feed, and I don't pay no attention to this particular brand. Uh, the key thing here is the label says unsulfured. Sulfur is a preservative typically used in syrup and what, or molasses, and what the sulfur uh, does is kill bacteria. Well, I'm trying to grow bacteria. And not only am I trying to grow bacteria, but I want the aerobic, good, oxygen-loving bacteria, not the stinking anaerobic stuff. And that's why I have the air stones. That is why I blow all this air. That's why I have great big air pumps to put a lot of air into these 58-gallon olive barrels that I have here. And I have a lot of them. And that does the magic down in here. And what I do for these big barrels is I put, I see I got different brands. I put, there's a Publix brand of the molasses, but it too is unsulfured. I put about one of those in each one of those barrels. And they have about 12 foot ounces, which is just about right. The, the goal is you want about a foot ounce for about every five gallons. A foot ounce is about two tablespoons of that stuff. You can either um, take leach it that drips through your beds when you feed and water your worms to uh, collect to begin the starter of your worm tea because it picks up the nutrients that come down through the through the uh, worm beds and the uh, beneficial bacteria, which worm guts particularly rich of that. Or you can take worm castings. Now this is actually worm bedding, which has castings in it. This is actually worm compost. I just grab the shoulder. It will work just fine. Now you can take this and make a tea bag. And I, for that today, I'm using some pantyhose to show you that. Pantyhose. Now the key thing is that uh, you could also use uh, like a t-shirt, cheesecloth, uh, sandbag. You want about oh a quart, maybe six. Uh, yeah, a quart would probably do. A quart, four to six cups of this will be just fine for five gallons. I've got about three gallons of water in here. I'm just trying to show you. The water is already colored because it came out of my aquaponics system. Because I just wanted to get some water. It did not have chlorine. That's the other key. Don't chlorinate the water. Now, so what I'm using here is just a regular small little air stone. Because it works on this scale. I like the bigger air stones I've got in, for these guys and big blowers. And a little aquarium blower plugged in over here. That's all I need for this. And I'll use these pantyhose. Now, you can use used pantyhose. But, you know... I don't have any used, used pantyhose because I just hadn't got into wearing this stuff myself, so I just bought some new ones. Uh, so in the world of, uh, in, in the world of pantyhose, I, I go somewhat commando. I don't have anything like that on my legs other than my pants. <laughs> anyway, hey, you got to have a little fun. you got a sense of humor when you do worms and worm stuff. So I'm going to take this stuff, put some in here, and put this in here. And I'm going to show you that, but I'm going to set the, turn the camera off to do this because I need two hands for that. Okay, I used that school shovel to dip this stuff out and put it inside these pantyhose. I mean, my gosh, I couldn't use a big shovel to get them in here. I just don't have the dexterity. That is enough stuff, more than enough, really, for the amount of water I got here. And I just tied it off on the handle of the bucket. So I'm just going to flip it over down inside. It'll get wet and sink over time. And the air will blow into it. And they say to let this uh, process go on for about... Uh, 36 hours some people claim some people say 24 is enough so somewhere between 24 and 46 hours and you should have some really good worm tea and you can tell that I really got more castings I need because it's a case that uh, I have a lot of it up here I could have filled this bucket up but look I'm, the object of this video is not to brew worm tea for, for me it's to show you how to do it and so the techniques are simple just get you uh, some of this hose, put a, get a little air stone in the aquarium shop, get you a little aquarium pump, and a five gallon bucket, a uh, pantyhose or a t-shirt, some a cheesecloth, uh, pour in unchlorinated water, and let it brew. Then come back and you'll have tea for you. And yeah, not to drink though. I tell people, don't drink it! I sell this stuff to farmer's market. Even today, a young boy came up and grabbed a bottle of it and started opening it off the bat. I said, no, 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 no. I told him, this stuff will either make you grow or make you go. And you don't want to go because you don't know where you're going to go. So, <laughs> yeah, don't drink this stuff. It's not for human consumption. But plants love it. It makes them grow like crazy. So there you go. This is how you can set up a small operation 
to make worm tea for yourself in your garden. And now this is, will be a concentrate. Oh yeah, let's put some uh, syrup in here. This will be a concentrate. You can uh, make, uh, uh, you can add, for every gallon of worm tea, you can add three or four gallons of water easily. So if you got a quart of this stuff, you can make a gallon of uh, solution. I'm just cutting that. And for measuring, since I don't have a tablespoon on me, I assume this lid here is, whoa, I'm getting dirt in here, but it ain't going to hurt anything really. If you get a lot of stuff in your worm tea, that's about a tablespoon, and I'm dropping it. You know, I am a rocket scientist, but this ain't rocket science. You don't have to have exact measurements. See that? See that? Now, the cool thing about molasses is it actually adds nutrients. I'm actually just going to pour some straight in here. That's a little bit more. It won't hurt because some people put molasses in their garden. Now you could stir it up. Let's see what I'm doing. Putting it in the rest of it here in my other worm tea. I'll add some more shortly. So I could take this little thing and stir it up, but it will brew. It'll be fine. Get all this stuff stirred up real nice. Uh, actually, this bubber will do some good work on that too. There you are. That will brew. Some people say in 24 hours it's done. Others say you need to let it brew a little longer. Now, okay, this worm tea is done. How do I know that? Because these bubbles have increased beyond the bubbles, which were the bubbles made by the air blower. These extra bubbles are the bubbles from the metabolic activity of the bacteria in this worm tea, which means it's really active, which is good. This worm tea is ready to use. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour it in here with the rest of my worm tea. But the good thing is, is this little uh, bag of uh, worm casting that I put in here, which is actually worm compost, uh, has now got a little bit of syrup in it since I put it in this mix here. And so that would actually be really good to put back in the worm bed. The worms will love it. Uh, it's just going to be rich in uh, syrup, sugars, and uh, uh, bacteria. And they will love it and eat it and return it to nice worm castings all over again. So I can get the, your use out of this. All those bubbles, all those suds in this bucket are a sign of the metabolic activity of the bacteria operating within the worm tea. So this is a lot more than the bubbles that the air stone created you might have saw in the earlier part of this video. Therefore, that means this worm tea is ready. It is brewed. The bacteria is happy. And again, all natural liquid pest repellent and fertilizer, great for your garden, makes your plants grow like crazy. Helps restore the ecological balance of your garden soil because good soil is living soil. I recapitulate because that's the most important thing you need to know as an organic gardener. So there you go, many more videos to come. Please, if you like the video, subscribe to my channel. Bang the update notification bell for the new ones that will be coming out. Check out my old videos. Uh, I've got links on here, links below. And to support my channel, please uh, look at my Patriot Supply for prepping supplies. And since this is gardening season, and particularly you want to be able to plant good stuff using heirloom seeds, check out True Leaf Market. And if you want to make your own worm castings and make your own worm tea, more important than anything, I sell worms. GreenGregs.com. Check it out. Buy your worms from me. I'll send them to you. I ship year around. Absolutely. No trouble. Because uh, I know how to pack the uh, peat moss to make the worms survive and uh, thrive. So buy your worms from me. I'll send them to you. And you can be making your own worm tea and making your garden grow great. This is how you make your own fertilizer. You don't have to go to the store and you can survive. If you don't have electricity, in the future, you can still make your warm tea and just kind of mix the buckets back and forth, back and forth. It may not be as good as having an air bubbler, but you know, you can do that for a little while. Stir it, mix it, mix it, mix it, you know, from bucket to bucket, and uh, it will be good stuff. That's how the Romans did it, by the way. So, uh, and, they, and you can do compost tea like this. So, there you go. That's your secret. You can make warm tea uh, with or without the power grid, and you can have warm castings, of course, without the power grid because worms don't care whether they got electrical power or not. They're beautiful little creatures. So thank you for watching.